Thank you for that introduction. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, at the back as well? Cool. I'm just going to set a timer, 40 minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, this is my talk, Optimize Your Web Development Workflow. And we're going to cover a few things in Chrome DevTools, uh, some of which you may know, some of which you hopefully don't know. Um, I've got a few About Me slides, but I'm going to keep it short because it's not so interesting. Um, I was at Shazam for five years. I've now moved on to Springer Nature, which is a huge, um, huge company, and it's a very different experience. And um, we are hiring, but rather than telling you that there's pizza and beer and foosball, because who cares about that, um, I will say that people leave on time, which I really like. Uh, hack days are actual hack days where you're meant to grow and like, expand your knowledge and learn completely new skills. Um, it's not just, hey, can you fix that, fix that bug that we've been meaning to fix? And we've got loads of open source code. I'm not going to go into it now, but we basically talk about all our front end practices, how we do OOCSS, how we do BEM, how we do all sorts. Cool. Oh, and if you are interested, tell me about it so I can get that referral bonus, please. <laughs> Kidding. Um, the camera that I'm wearing, in case you're wondering, uh, I don't really know. It's just a thing that I do. Uh, this is the video at the top that Smash and Conf posted on their Vimeo channel. Then I synced the video that I recorded from the GoPro to the. Uh, I really don't know why I do these things, but. Uh, um, <laughs> So moving on, I, I make these things called uh, DevTools Tips. And I started back in 2013, which is, um, which is when people were really like, hey, I didn't know that. And just hearing that and hearing that you got to share some knowledge, that was a really nice experience for me. So I continued. And I've recently hit the 120 tip milestone uh, last week. I'm actually on 121, posted one this morning. And it's all about, um, yeah, it's just full of Chrome DevTools Tips. It would really help if you. Subscribe, I know that's a terrible thing to say, but yeah, you, it's a one-click unsubscribe if you hate it, or you just search for Chrome Dev Tips if you forget that URL. But it's basically once a week, it's a drift in your inbox showing how to do a particular developer tools related thing. Okay, um, we've got quite a bit to cover, and I'm trying to tell stories here rather than just, hey, click this button and then this thing happens. So I've broken it up into stories. The stories are CSS animation and so on. Um, and also, a bit, the extra is some exciting stuff that was announced. Uh, but yeah, and what you need to know to make the most out of this talk is uh, there are a lot of images. There's a lot of media and videos. Of course, if you do miss something, I'll post these online afterwards. Um, not straight after, but very shortly. And there are 100 slides to get through, at least. So go move on. CSS. Um, just to get us into the flow of things, I'm going to talk about something we all know. Um, has everyone used DevTools here, most people? Ah, oh, yes, OK, great. Um, so you all know this. You all know how to add a CSS property, add a property value, and you see the change immediately. This is just to get us into the flow of things, by the way. Um, you might not know about the element class toolbar, which is it's this little, you hit that CLS um, button in the top right. Um, and when you hit that, you get this, this like input box that pops up. And you can start adding classes to the DOM element that you've inspected. But what's really new, actually, is that canary will now start extracting selectors from your style sheet and be like, oh, you're using Bootstrap. I see you've got these classes available. Let me auto-suggest them for you. So that's pretty useful. Shadow editors, there are a few of these. Um, there's the box shadow editor. And you hit that little, did you see that? It's this little square icon. You hit that, and you can start like dragging and dropping, or dragging, rather, not dropping. And like affect the box shadow value, values. And this isn't just useful from a perspective of accomplishing the task at hand. This is also useful for learning. Because I always forget, like, oh, what's the Y offset? What's the spread? And always forgetting. So being able to like just have this window, this visual editor, where you can drag stuff around and see the values that it's impacting, very useful. And this, of course, works for text shadow as well. The layout editor, I was a bit mm, not sure on whether to show this. Um, I showed this at a different conference, and people liked it. So I'm going to show it, but it's really flaky. It's an experiment, so I don't know. Um, you enable the layout editor in the uh, experiments panel. You inspect an element, and then you get these little handlers overlaid across the elements. And you can start dragging stuff just all over the place. And I think this is super like revolutionary. I think it could really change, change the way people make websites. Um, but again, for now, it's, it's experimental. It doesn't. Mm, it's, bit funny. I don't know what the future of it is, but uh, I thought I'd show it. OK, animation. There's a few parts to this. And well, the few parts are these three parts. We're going to take a look at each one. 
and there's recording. So web page on the left, dev tools on the right. We trigger an animation in the web page, we go to the animations pane, and the very act of opening that pane up causes it to listen for animations. When it listens, it is represented by this little rectangular block, and that is the animation that it's captured. But that's, of course, only step one. You then are able to play an animation. And to do that, you just click on it. Really simple. And when you play an animation, it, um, it breaks down for you all the elements that were, that were animated, animated, sorry, and um, it will also replay it for you in the web page. There is, of course, modifying an animation, which is probably the coolest part of it. And um, you can modify the timing, the, you know, the duration, the offset, and a few other bits and pieces. So we'll start again just so you see the whole process. You hit that animate it button that triggers a little CSS animation. I've captured it, which is block number two. You click on it, and then you get all these, these tiny little handlers. And you can actually drag those around, and that will, in turn, write to the styles pane. So it will write the, the new value as to how you've, um, how you've modified it. The Bezier editor, this is one I personally found quite useful because I was always having to search for it. If you do some sort of CSS animation, maybe a transition, um, you know that you can specify easings. Oh, that doesn't affect that screen. Um, you can specify easings, and um, these easings are sometimes very easy, like linear or ease in, but sometimes they're not so much. So DevTools has this thing built in called the Cubic Bezier Editor. And oh, by the way, a little side note, if you open up this arrow, you can see the individual properties that maps to the, to the shorthand. So animation is just a shorthand. But anyway, back to the point at hand. Uh, you click on that little square, and again, just like the box shadow editor or the text shadow editor, and you get this nice little dialogue where you can move stuff around, and that will in turn affect the, the value. This is really nice, because this means you can sit with a designer who might want to customize one of the presets, and you can actually like, figure out an animation that works for you. Performance, there's a few things to talk about here. And um, yeah, so in the past, Performance was all about the network. It was all about a time to first byte or how long that handshake took and, and so on. And, but it turns out DevTools has this like crazy, crazy vast array of tools, um, all for debugging front end performance. And we unfortunately don't have the time to go through each one, but we are gonna take a look at a few. Okay, to start out, there's an FPS meter. And I chose this specifically because it's kind of interesting in that you don't really need a lot of knowledge to, to like use this. You, can, you don't have to be a developer to use this. And to make this a compelling demo, I took a slow website. I took like, one of Wikipedia's longest pages, a list of planets. I applied box shadows everywhere and I ended up with this ridiculous looking thing. Um, and what you do is you open up DevSource, you open up the rendering pane, and you get to that pane by hitting these, uh, these three dots, which opens up a little side menu. Toggle on the frames per second meter. Once you do that, you get this um, overlay in your viewport in the top right. And that um, actually shows you the current frames per second uh, as you know, at that current point in time. And what's nice about this is if ever you suspect something might be slow, you know, no matter who you are, you could be a product person, QA, you can, can start doing the action that you, you have a sneaky suspicion about and you can actually prove whether or not it is slow. The paint profiler is Mm, like I wasn't sure because it's you're probably never going to like need this, but it is kind of interesting from a learning perspective, which is why I'm showing it. It's the only reason, um, and it answers the question: How does a browser draw something to your page? And I guess a lot of us possibly like uh, I still don't know. I'm still trying to learn more about it. But here I've taken this little WhatsApp demo, um, and a side note: This you don't have to read it. It doesn't because it's out of context now. When I was making these slides, it was full of, it was like 200 or something, and I've halved that now. So that when I publish these online, this slide will make sense, but for now, you don't have to pay attention to the text. That WhatsApp demo is uh, made in CSS by credit to Jake Archibald, who made it for a blog post, and I wanted to see how the browser draws it. And if you look, it's actually drawing, if I replay that, it's drawing like the speech bubble, it draws the text, the pseudo element straight after. And what I wanted to show is how you can do one of these yourself. So you go to the timeline panel, you check the paint trip box right here, you start a recording, and then you get a list of records. Each one of these records represents an, an activity or basically a thing that the browser has, has had to do. You click on paint, and then you get this really long uh, timeline view, 
where it's full of these vertical bars, and those vertical bars represent something the browser had to draw. So you can start scrolling through, and it shows you how, how exactly the, these elements were drawn to your page. And on the left-hand side, uh, down here, these are what are referred to as draw calls. And draw calls are what I see as internal, like, graphic-related functions that the browser had to call. So again, this is, like, you're probably never going to have to use it to solve a performance issue, but kind of nice to know about. Line-level profiling is very powerful. It's the ability for DevTools to say, hey, um, you just executed some JavaScript, and this is how long it took. On the left, there's going to be a 3JS demo, a little visualization made in WebGL. On the right, we've got DevTools, and I've opened up the code to run that demo. And I noticed it's making all these new instances of uh, face3 and new3.vector3, and I was like, could this be slow? And it's also running in a for loop, by the way. So what we do is we go to the timeline panel, and here's a kind of interesting feature. You can throttle the CPU. So you can say, hey, pretend that I'm on a low-end device. So we throttle that. We then record a timeline, a timeline profile. Um, in this case, I'm reloading the page. You don't have to. You just do the action that you want to profile. You go back to the sources panel, and DevTools will annotate the code for you and be like, hey, this line took this long. That line took that long, which is super, super powerful. And actually, when I was the first iteration of this video that I made to show you was actually of like certain JavaScript frameworks. And then I thought, mm, maybe not going to show that, because someone will write a very angry medium blog post at me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you, you can try it yourself. Like, try it on your own website if you're using certain JavaScript frameworks. Actually understand that execution cost. Um, and we're not going to cover network throttling, but for those of you who don't know, you can do CPU throttling which is great, but you can also do network throttling. And if you do have a bit of time, one thing I would really recommend is throttling the CPU to a low-end device and throttling the network to around 2G or 3G. And just use your website. Use your website how you would expect to use it to and like, see how it feels. Console timing, this is just a screenshot um, meant to show how console timing works. We've got a little function called get, and that get executes a network request. The first line of it and the last line says console.time and console.time end. Right in between, you can chuck whatever JavaScript you want to. In this case, I've combined the, um, the sort of niceness of the async await syntax to be able to profile this fetch, you know, like a network request using the fetch API. And the result of that is numbers API response time, and it tells you how long it is. Of course, this has nothing to do with network requests. You can profile whatever JavaScript you want to. Timeline marking is very similar, and we're going to take that exact same example, and we'll replace console.time with performance.mark. And the way to think about, or the way I like to think about performance.mark is like a little checkpoint, um, like a little save checkpoint in a game. Um, and you end it with performance.measure, and you pass all the little checkpoints that you made, or rather all the little checkpoints that you want to measure. The result of running all this is if you go to the timeline panel, uh, it will actually show you, hey, like the, the width of this bar represents the length of time that network request took. So this is a really um, advanced way of profiling. And it's a bit, it's kind of a shame. I used a silly example. It's like very simple, so it doesn't actually look amazing. But if you try this on your own website, uh, you'll get all these, this like rainbow of visualizations in the timeline panel. And it really d does look amazing. But more importantly, it tells a story, which is what you want. Um, it, yeah. Now, so we covered styles, animation, um, performance, and this is kind of finishing up the performance section. And it's a little, it's related to DevTools, but it's not exactly DevTools. Um, I've seen a few people going to this repository on GitHub, perf slash audits, and doing these like really in-depth, publicly available audits of um, very popular websites like Airbnb and um, Imager and Tumblr. And they're including screenshots, code examples, links, and it's all very useful. And I really like that the, you know, the kind of, it's not publicly shaming these websites, but it's sharing knowledge and it's making it available to us, um, us being people who might not be familiar with how to conduct a performance audit. So it's very useful. Um, and it's, I think it's great that it's just available in the public. Cool. And um, there's a lot more to this. Again, don't have time to cover it all. Uh, do search for any one of these terms if you're interested to learn more. But when I do share these slides, I'll chuck a few more of these, like uh, the CPU profiler layers panel. I'll cover a few more of these in the online version of the slides. 
Okay, development workflows. Oh, I know, I've made this, this totally unintentional typo. Uh, so maybe we should just fix that. And these are web-based slides. So I'm gonna go to the sources panel and this very natural and organic demo. And, um, oh, by the way, this is FFConf day two exclusive because just uh, last, last evening, was it? Um, a new feature was announced in DevTools. So yesterday's attendees didn't get to see this. So this is really cool. Um, I'm gonna add a folder to my workspace and um, select FFConf 2016. And this folder represents the web-based slides that you're seeing right now. Um, DevTools is asking for permission to write to that folder and I'll say allow. And just like that, trust me, I did this demo yesterday, a similar demo, and the workflow that I had to go through was a lot clunkier. The speakers who were here, they'll, they'll be able to attest to that. It was a very different experience. Now you have to do nothing. You just add the folder to your workspace. Um, I'm gonna search for index.html, search for that typo, fix that typo, 111, one, one. add some confetti, hit command S, Right, and that command S triggers um, triggers like a write to the file system. Grunt, you can use gulp, you can use whatever watch task you care about, and um, we'll then watch that and be like, oh, I see a change, let me compile the new version, let me do whatever. So that's, um, that's cool. Uh, in the past, in case you're interested, you had to go through this ridiculous like network file system mapping and it, it wouldn't work otherwise. But now you just drag the folder you want and DevTools will actually, can you see that? It's, oh no, it's really tiny. Can you see a little tick? That tick represents the, the mapping that it's made from the network to the file system. And it's using a really like clever set of heuristics to figure out what maps to what. And while we're here, let's just inspect this and maybe command click there. And by the way, note that this is um, SAS. This isn't CSS. I could maybe just change that, change that color. Hit command S, and that works. Cool. Wait, okay, live demos, let me go back. Uh, uh, no, I don't want, don't want all my headings to be red. Okay, so do that. Uh, e, e, e. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's Workspaces, and that's Workspaces 2.0. Um, I think they refer to that as uh, in the experiments. So settings, experiments, sorry, persistence 2.0, but it's, it's basically the next generation of workspaces. You can try that out if you're interested. But again, experimental features are like, hmm, so don't, they're not guaranteed to, to always work. But yeah. um, you might have seen when I was changing the color, you had the regular squares to bring up the color picker. So the shadow editor, the Cubic Bezier editor and the color picker tool are all available in the sources panel. They didn't used to be, so that's a, that's a good addition. And there's also this experiment called sources diff, which, like, so I've been writing in this SAS file, this is a screenshot, and it's annotated the gutters to say, oh, th these lines have changed, these lines have been added, this one has been removed. So it adds these little colors to give you a kind of diff view, but that's experimental. It turns out there's actually a history panel in DevTools um, which can tell you exactly what changes you've been making. And that's there, that's stable, that works. And that's, um, you just hit those three dots to bring up the side menu, go to history, and that will show you what changes you've been making. Um, go to member, this is useful. Uh, open up a JavaScript file, hit Command, Shift, and O. And you start typing in a JavaScript function or a JavaScript method, and it will fuzzy match for you um, any references that it finds in that JavaScript file. Of course, you can do the same thing in CSS. So Command Shift O, start typing in a selector, and it will find it for you. And that is fuzzy matching as well, by the way. Cool. And um, there's tons of these. Like really, they just go on forever. Um, and DevTools borrows from something called the Code Mirror project, which is like a web-based editor. So they're like working on all these new shortcuts, and there's a lot of existing shortcuts. If you want to learn more about those, there's an article, and um, you can search for DevTools tips for Sublime Text users, and you'll find that. Um, and it covers how to do all of these, by the way. Customizing. Okay, so a few little customizing DevTools tricks. A uh, Command Shift P. That will bring up what's referred to as the command menu, where you can 
pretty much typing in anything. Like anything the DevTools can do, you can just type into that menu. Um, here I'm going to switch to the dark theme. If you didn't know, there's, a, there's an actual functional and usable version of the dark theme in DevTools now. It used to be an extension. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I've been using it a little. Works very nicely. You can also rearrange the panel titles as well. So you, the ones that you need most, put to the left. The ones that you use least, put to the right. Um, extra. Okay, so we've got a few, like a few bits and pieces that we're going to cover. They don't really fall into a particular bucket. Um, if you go to the network panel and you have a list of resources, it turns out you can type in larger than 20 kilobytes, and it will actually filter for you. So that that's a one example of a filter query that that you can use. But what's nice is you can also negate that filter query. So you just prefix it with a dash, a hyphen. And it will say, find all resources that are not larger than 20k. As you can see, it's done that. Uh, we've got a few of these advanced filter queries available. These are well documented. Um, and if you want to read more about these, just I think it is literally called advanced filter queries in DevTools. You can search for that. Smart console, this is nice. Um, the console panel has been like improving rapidly. And if you go to Canary, you'll, you'll find out. Um, so let me, actually, let me restart that in case you missed it. You start typing in code. You hit enter. Now, in the past, DevTools would be like, what? Missing curly brace and it will like, blow up. But now, um, it actually figures out that you're like midway through a function. So it will automatically insert a new line. But what's even nicer is it also knows when to execute the function. So from your perspective, you're just hitting enter each time. This is nice. This is also in the console panel. We've got variables A, B, and C in this function. And um, <coughs> silly me, I forgot to uh, declare them. So what we'll do is we'll hold the Alt. Is it Alt? Yeah. The Alt modifier key, uh, click and drag. And this enables a multi-cursor support. So you can now start typing in let. Um, but the thing is, like best practices, maybe we could turn these into const. So how else can we multi-select? Well, if you select the first let, you can hit Command-D, Command-D, Command-D to select every occurrence. But if you're paying attention, C is modified. So we don't want C to be a a const, so we can undo that. I know there's a lot to take in here, but we can undo that with command u. Sorry, I should have, maybe I should have split this video out, but command u to sel select multiple occurrences, command u to undo the last occurrence. I hope that did make sense. Um, this is a cool one. This isn't something you should ever like think about. The whole point is it just works behind the scenes. And um, if you start typing in JavaScript, DevTools like, actually proactively compiles that. It sends it to the V8 engine, and it's like, is this JavaScript legit? Has it got errors? And it will keep doing that continuously. So you don't even have to save. You don't have to hit return. You just have to start typing. Um, but I wanted to mention it because I think it's quite cool. It's quite useful. Um, even if you use the DevTools as a JavaScript like sandbox, a playground, I think it's this features like this makes it very useful. Console API. Um, this is maybe not, not going to go into this too much, but just know that you can do things like console.table, and that will give you a table console.info, you get like, they're, they're very subtle things, but it just like slightly styles the message a bit differently. Um, there's console.memory to give you memory information, console.groups, uh, oh, and there's this like ridiculous, you can just add CSS as well. It's a certain, a subset of CSS that is um, to console logs. Request blocking, okay, so there's, this is a quick video, so I have to explain a bit more. Uh, we're going to go to my website, and I've got a long list of tips, 121, don't you know? And, and <laughs> next to each tip, there's a thumbnail. And the goal of this video is to block the thumbnail from loading. Um, so there's the tips. There's the network panel. We right-click on any thumbnail, right-click, and say, block this request URL. When we say that, DevTools is like, right, on the next reload, I'm not going to load this. But we can do something even more interesting. We can edit that URL and say, do you know what? Just everything in assets, please don't load. Um, I want to see what the page looks like. And yeah, it turns out, like I got, I'm kind of fortunate in that it was just regular HTML. So everything is still functional. Even it looks ridiculous, it still does work. You can read the text, you can navigate. So I would kind of, I don't know, I would suggest or yeah, maybe like a suggestion to try this out and um, to try blocking your JavaScript, try blocking your CSS see how your page performs. Cool. Um, so this is another FFConf day two exclusive, because it was only 
announced recently. Um, so if we go to Bootstrap, uh, oh, I have to zoom out a bit. Can you see the CSS coverage? Yeah. So if, if we check that, something interesting happened. So here's the CSS on bootstrap.com. Uh, so it's a lot of CSS, and you probably heard um, all in the name of perform performance, how you should only load the CSS that you really need. But if we go back to the timeline panel, check that CSS coverage, start a recording, maybe even do some actions that trigger some more CSS, hit start, go back to the CSS. Um, DevTools will actually uh, annotate for you in the gutter and say, hey, this chunk of CSS was not used. But what's really powerful is in the past, tools like this were very like kind of naive in their approach. The way DevTools is doing this is it's allowing you to do whatever you want on your website. Go, like, go crazy, trigger all the CSS. And just like that, it can tell you exactly what CSS it didn't, didn't need to be there. So that's really powerful. Um, this is an experiment if you want to settings, experiment, track CSS rules usage while recording timeline. But again, as I said, uh, experiments are very, like, we don't know what's going to happen with them. Cool, so that's, oh wait, oh no. Well, we've got a bit of time available, so maybe we could try and fix this. So again, in this very unscripted and organic demo, <laughs> Maybe we should uh, try and fix this image because it's broken. Um, I don't know what happened. So <laughs> I'm going to remove that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I had this little GIF to show you. And in fact, it's a GIF that's so important, I had to host it on its own web server. As you can see, it's localhost 3000. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Hmm. So it seems that I'm using a Node.js uh, Express web server, but it's not working. So maybe we should start that web server. That would probably be a good idea. But my terminal, my terminal feels so far away. <laughs> it'd, be, <laughs> it'd be really good if I just could go to experiments and, I don't know, maybe hit shift like six times and <laughs> maybe <laughs> check this terminal and draw checkbox. Maybe hit escape and then, ah. Oh, oh. Look at that, it's a terminal. Um, by the way, this isn't like announced. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and this isn't announced. It was purely because uh, I was looking at the DevTools commits like you do on a Friday evening, and I <laughs> just happened to see this. So go to node example. And by the way, this is like my actual terminal terminal. It's not like a fake, a fake web thing because you can do like, things and yeah. Um, so let's start that server, node index.js, reload it. Okay, so we know this is working. Um, and I've shown you the terminal experiment and I'm gonna close that because there's actually a few other bugs that I don't wanna get into. Okay, um, I'm gonna use this and rather than saying node index.js, I'm gonna say node dash dash inspect.js. Cool. And DevTools is like, hey, look at this URL. So we copy that URL, go to it, yeah. Um, okay, I have to show you the code for this as well, so it makes a bit more sense. And th you have to help me, please. And help me, FFCon, stop helping. So this is the bit where, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it seems we've got this, I don't know, we've got this file. That's, that's the thing I wanna show you, by Dr. <laughs> It's a little animation. And I'm saying response.send file. Hmm. So it'd be really good if we could try and fix this. Um, and by the way, these numbers, uh, this is because of a set interval. And the reason I put that there is specifically for you to have a look. Because every time we reload it, we're going to have to reload node, of course. You, every time you make a change, you control C. You reload the process, and it starts again. Um, I just want you to pay attention to how many times this is reloading. Um, but anyway, let's try and fix this. So. Here's localhost 3000. Here's this like remote Chrome DevTools, which is showing me my console logs. Maybe I can just uh, go to index.js. That's pretty nice. Can you see that? Yeah. Cool. So can we like set a breakpoint like we would do normally? Even this is Node.js. Maybe I'll reload that page and 
well, cool. So this is um, like live debugging of Node.js code uh, through Chrome DevTools. There's no like extension like you would have to use in the past. It's purely an experiment. And for those of you wondering, uh, process dot version. So it's Node 7. And of course, when I type in process, it's being evaluated in the context of this function. So that's pretty nice. OK, let's try and fix this. Uh, so I'm sending the file. And the result is a string. But I want the contents of it. So I guess we have to, yeah, we have to use the file system module, this one. Oh, cool, I can hover over it. And I can see all the methods. Ah. So isn't there like a read? Yeah, read, read file sync. I guess we want that. Show function. Oh, no. So fs read file sync. Oh, cool. I can show function definition. I can look at the source code of that function. Even that's like a Node.js file system module. Go back. OK. So I know that I want to pass in the file. The file is, that, that's the path. It's a, it's a file system reference. And if I call read file sync, I indeed get the, get the buffer. The question is, how do we get that into the node process? Because do I have to go back to Sublime and then Control C and Maybe I could just edit it and hit Command S and resume script execution. Oh, cool. So we're getting there, because if you saw at the bottom, the file downloaded. But we're like half, we're half the way there. This is such an elaborate demo for what is. <laughs> you're you're going to be so unimpressed with the drift. But anyway, um, the problem is that I'm not setting the content type. So again, I haven't restarted Node. The interval has continued. We're at 103. So I'll set another breakpoint. Reload the page, come here. Now I happen to know, even this is a totally unscripted demo, I happen to know the command. Uh, it's response.set header content type uh, image drip. And we have to tell the browser, hey, this is a, an image, and so it can serve it to you appropriately. Right now it's just causing it to download. But the point is, command S, undo the breakpoint, resume script execution. Go back to the browser, and there's the image. So that, that just works. Um, uh, you're probably really disappointed now. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so I can also reload these slides. That works. Yeah. And hmm. um, so to recap on what we just saw, uh, we saw CSS coverage. CSS coverage is the ability for DevTools to say, hey, um, this CSS didn't execute, it wasn't like evaluated in your page, so possibly consider uh, like removing it or like d delaying its um, download. And one of the really powerful things, and one of the big engineering efforts that they put into, was actually the, the ability to have you, the developer, continue using your web page so that it can, like, it can watch what you're doing and possibly listen out for any uh, dynamically added CSS. And we saw Node.js debugging with live edit. And the way that works is Node.js 7, Chrome DevTools experiment. Uh, you open up DevTools. You've seen this already now, but experiments. Uh, where is it? Here it is. So shift six times. I think they did that to keep people like me away. But uh, <laughs> no debugging. You check that, and you can like start inspecting. And it's pretty cool. Um, what else? Yeah, there's the ability to see like Node.js functions. I mean, that's. That's a regular DevTools thing. You can right click on a function and say, show function source. And then finally, there was the terminal, which was, yeah, that was really cool. I wasn't expecting that. And again, that was uh, because like looking at commits, I'm assuming they'll announce at some point. But for now, it's very flaky, so I wouldn't treat it as an official thing. Just think of it as an unofficial like sneak peek. Cool. Um, that's it for now. Uh, that's my Twitter. And you can follow me. I post a bunch of web development tips. That's my email address for feedback. And we're going to have a break, so you can ask me questions a bit later. Um, do subscribe. It does help out. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>